Praise the Lord out there. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Um, I'm going to do a little study here, man. Um, I was reading this morning, and I'm reading through Matthew right now. Um, a couple days ago, I read through Matthew 7. And, um, man, Matthew 7 is complete fire. Matthew 7. I'm probably going to um, meditate and marinate on Matthew 7 for a couple days. I'm just going to read it over and over and try to get it in my spirit because Matthew 7 is awesome. But I went into Matthew 8, and um, this is Jesus. You know, this is Jesus' ministry. His ministry already started, and so he's healing people. He's um, healing people of leprosy. He's healing people that are sick. He's healing even a woman that had a fever. He touched her hand, and her fever went away, and she was able to make a meal for them. Um, he's casting demons out of people. Um, so he's been, he, Jesus has already started his ministry and, and he's already done a lot of things. And the disciples are watching all this stuff. They're seeing all this stuff take place. Um, and in Jesus, or in, in Jesus 8, in Matthew 8, basically Jesus 8, in Matthew 8, um, so they're going across this lake, right? So they're going across the lake and um, all of a sudden a storm comes and the, the waves are coming over the boat, and Jesus is sleeping. And so they go and wake up Jesus. Lord, Lord, um, we're going to die. You know, we're going to die. Do something. Do something. And Jesus responded with this. And this thing hit me right here. It hit me like a pound of bricks. He said, just simple, simple words. But it stuck out to me. It just hit me hard. He said, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. He said, why are you afraid? Basically, you've been with me for this long. If you're with me, then what are you afraid of? Why are you afraid? Why do you have such little faith? You've seen demon-possessed people uh, be delivered. You've seen leprosy just disappear. The Bible said that it disappears why are you afraid? And even for us, like I've been walking with Jesus for some time now. And when something rises up, then why would I be afraid of that? Why would I be afraid of the devil? Why would I be afraid of, of temptation? Why would I be afraid of a storm? Why would I be afraid of this stuff? I've been walking with Jesus and he hasn't let me down thus far. Why would I be afraid? The Bible goes on to say, he... He got up, Jesus got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. Suddenly there was a great calm. And the disciples, look at this, listen to this. The disciples were amazed, right? They've already seen all this stuff happen, but they were amazed. They said, who is this man? Who is this man, they asked. Even the winds and waves obey him. Well, duh, he's the son of God, disciples. He's the son of God. You guys have been walking with him this far. He's done this much in your guys' life. Can't you have faith? Can't you not be afraid? Can't you know who this man is? So the Bible goes on. So that was Jesus. Uh, I said Jesus again. <laughs> that was Matthew 8. And uh, so they get across the lake. Everything calms down. They get across the lake. And they see, uh, they see uh, two demon-possessed men. It says, uh, two men were possessed by demons, and they met him. They lived in the cemetery and were so violent that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him. The demon-possessed men, they began screaming at Jesus. Why are you interfering with us, son of God? <laughs> Do you hear what they said? Why are you interfering with us, son of God? Even the demons knew who Jesus was. And the men that were walking with him didn't know that he was the son of God. Even the demons knew their theology. They addressed him as the son of God. And the, de and the uh, disciples are probably tripping out like, what? These, these demons know who he is? And um, so, have you come here to torture us before it's our time? Basically, they're saying, you're here way too early, Jesus. It's not our time yet. You're not going to cast us into the lake of flames. Have you come to torture us? Because you're here too early. Even the demons knew their theology. They knew that, G they knew that, um, um, that 
it wasn't time for them to be cast into the lake of flame, so they begged Jesus, cast us into those um, cast us into those pigs over there. They were regional. They were regional. Those demons were regional. And even another part says that, uh, I think in John and, or in Mark and Luke, it says that the, the, the man's name was a uh, 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 legion. The man's name was legion. Basically, Jesus asked him, what's your name? And the, and the man, his name, he said his name was Legion. That wasn't his real name, but he was so demon possessed that the demons were speaking on his behalf. The demons were speaking for him. So the demon said, there's 2,000 strong up in here. Basically, the demon was trying to intimidate Jesus. Come on. Intimidate the son of God, trying to intimidate Jesus, saying, you've been casting out my little cousins. You've been casting out my little friends over there. But up in here, there's 2000 strong. And so Jesus, that's nothing for Jesus. That's nothing for us, man. That's nothing. Why are you afraid? What are you scared of? Basically. So Jesus casted him out and they said, don't cast us out into a dip. You notice how the demon said, don't cast us into a distant land, basically because we own this area. We've been here for a long time. We're some regional demons up in here. Don't cast us out of this place. And so he said, he gave them, you know, he gave permission for the demons to be cast out into the pigs and the pigs ran off into the, off the cliff into the water and drowned, right? So check this out. The herdsmen, the herdsmen that you know, of the pigs that, uh, uh, of the pigs that ran off the cliff, the herdsmen fled to a nearby town. They said that they fled. They fled. Why would they flee? They must have been scared. The only reason you flee is if you're scared of something. Ah, what the heck's going on? Probably what the heck? These pigs are running off and stand. And these demon possessed men, they're, they're fleeing, right? They're running. Ah! The herdsmen fled to the nearby town. Check this out. Listen. Telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. Now, now look. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus. But, but they begged him to go away and leave him alone. There you go. That place was on lock. That area. It was a uh, Gadarenus. I bet I think that's how you say it. There were regional demons in that area of Gadarenus that had that place on lock. That um, those demons probably ended up going back to the town and entering those people and telling Jesus, leave here, leave this place. They begged him to, to go away. See, the, the devil doesn't, the devil, when Jesus shows up on the scene, the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, that demons tremble. In the name of Jesus, that demons have to flee. So they knew, these people knew that that was Jesus. They knew that he was the son of God. But since they were possessed by demons, they said, leave us, leave us and leave us alone. So Jesus left, man. Jesus ended up leaving and um, he told the demon possessed man because the, uh, I forget, they did, he didn't have a name. They said his name was Legion. His name ain't Legion no more, but it said the demon possessed man that was now delivered wanted to follow Jesus. But Jesus told him, and um, let me look for it. I think it's Luke. Uh, Jesus basically told him. Uh, oh, it's in Mark. Mark 5, I think. Jesus basically told him. So he said. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus, I want to go with you. I want to follow you. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything that the Lord has done for you, how merciful that Jesus has been. So the man started off to visit the 10 towns. This man, this formerly, formerly demon-possessed man, this formerly demon-possessed man, became one of the greatest evangelists of his time. He started off to the 10 towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. He brought 
the town to the feet of Jesus. He became the greatest evangelist, one of the greatest evangelists of his time. See, God did something in his life. Jesus came, delivered him, redeemed him, because that's what the cross is about. Redemption, salvation, healing, deliverance. That's what the cross is about. Jesus, uh, Jesus came, uh, Jesus came. God saved us, so we die to our flesh, pick up our cross, and follow him. Not die to our flesh, pick up our credit card and go to Macy's <laughs> and go to Macy's that God didn't come to put money in your account. God came to do something in your life so that you'd repent, turn from your wicked ways, follow him, and that you would be a testimony of his power, be an extension of his hand. That's why he came. So God came into my life. God called me at a young age. I ran from it. I ran from God's calling in my life, but God got a hold of my life because how many know when God calls you, it's irrevocable. You can't run from it. You can't cancel it. You can't stop it. He's going to come and he's going to have his way. You know what I mean? And if he does, and if you don't surrender, your life's going to be a living hell. I promise you. So I gave my life to him. He called me at a young age. I ran from it. I gave my life to him. And now the testimony that I have, it's not that I went out and I had to get a testimony to, to show God's power. No, each and every one of us, we all have a testimony. Some people have never gone out into the world, but that's an awesome testimony. That's a testimony of God's keeping power, that God could keep you pure at a young age, that God could keep you pure through your whole life, that you didn't have to learn from us or you didn't have to do what other people were doing, but you learned from their mistakes. That's a testimony. God is calling us so that we could be a testimony to others, so we could testify. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and by what? The word of our testimony, by the blood of Jesus. Without the blood of Jesus, we don't have a testimony. Without the blood of Jesus, I'd still be out on the streets shooting dope. Without the blood of Jesus, I'm just telling you a story. But with the blood of Jesus, I have the power, I have the anointing, the authority with, by the blood of Jesus. See, the, the Bible says in Acts, I think it's two, when the, when the Spirit came upon them, the Spirit gave them power and boldness to what? To preach the gospel, to tell our testimony, to not be scared, to not be intimidated, to not tremble, but to be a bold as a lion as a, and, and as gentle as a dove, right? A bold as a lion. And as gentle as a, I don't know, I forget what it was. But to be bold as lions. God is not looking for a Christian that is uh, scared. Oh, Lord, I'm scared. Oh, they might think I'm weird. Oh, they might think I'm kind of a weirdo. I don't want to say Jesus. I don't want too many people to know that I'm a Christian. I just, just my friends at church, just my Christian friends, but my other friends, I don't want them to know that I'm a Christian. No, God has called us to stand on the mountaintop to proclaim, yes, that he is the son of God, to proclaim that he has come to give the world eternal life so that no one will perish, but we will have have everlasting life that's what Jesus came for and we have to proclaim that Jesus came to give you eternal life Jesus came that he could give you an, a life that he could bless you he could give you life and life more abundantly Woo, that's that's powerful right there so that 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 story man why are you afraid why are you afraid do not be afraid for I am with you you are more than a conqueror through Jesus not through yourself not through your hobbies, not through your job, not through the things that you do, but through Jesus. Because trust me, you can get through life by yourself. You can get through life on your own, but in the end, you don't win. In the end, it's you zero and the devil one. You don't win in the end. Trust me, it's better to give your life now. It's better to enter into heaven Bible says if your hand causes you to sin, then chop that sucker off. If your eye causes you to sin, then pluck it out. It's better to enter into heaven with one eye than to go to the pits of hell with two, than to go to the pits of hell with all your members. Trust me, it's better. And you got to know that your foundation is only in Jesus. See, the Bible says that he is the chief cornerstone. My, my pastor is talking about the chief 
cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone. If we could build our house upon that chief cornerstone, then when that big bad wolf comes to blow your house down, that it's going to stand. When the big bad wolf comes to shake it up a little bit, then you're not going to be shaken. Your feet are on solid ground. Your feet are on the foundation of Jesus and you will not be shaken. It doesn't matter if the winds blow. It doesn't matter if the waters rise. It doesn't matter if the earth shakes. Your house will not fall because you are built upon the chief cornerstone and that is Jesus. Amen. I feel like preaching up in here. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place, man. Where the Spirit is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. John 8, 36, who the Son sets free is free indeed, my friend. Who the Son sets free, He is free indeed. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're free. Brother, you are free. If Jesus set you free, you are free. Now we have to just walk in it. We have to just walk in it. Put one foot in front of the other. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by feeling. It's not a feeling, my friends. It's not a feeling. Even though I feel the Holy Spirit, Spirit, and it gives me boldness. It gives me power. I do not go upon my feeling because the day I go upon that feeling and that feeling leaves me is the day that I'm going to go look for that feeling in something else. I'm going to go look for that feeling in a drug. I'm going to go look for that feeling in a woman. I'm going to go look for that feeling in alcohol. I'm going to go look for that feeling in a vacation. Oh, I need to feel happy again, so I need to go on vacation. No, no. Joy. God gives us joy. God gives us peace, but we don't go upon those feelings. See, we don't go to Jesus to get these things. We go to Jesus because we love him for what he did. And he is the chief cornerstone. He is the one that gives us eternal life. He is the gate. He is the one. He is the only way. He is the only way. I'm telling you, he is the word. Jesus is the word. And we have to... See, Jesus didn't come to bring peace, man. That's where people got it twisting. We don't like hearing that, but it's true. Jesus did not come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. He came to divide, man. He came to set father against son, mother against daughter, teacher against student. He come to separate, man. He was the word. What does the word do? It divides this word, this word. It divides soul and spirit. Jesus is the word. Jesus came to divide. See, people, see, see, nowadays people want to put Muslim, Catholic, Mormon, Jehovah, and they want to put them all in a mixing bowl. Oh, we, oh, we serve the same God. Oh, we have the same Jesus. We don't serve the same God. It is not the same Jesus. It is not. See, there's a divide there, but the, the world wants to come and put it all together, mesh it all together. Every road leads to the same place is what they say. No, it doesn't. The Bible says the, way, the, the, um, the, the, the road to hell is broad. It's broad. It's wide. And many people go down that road. But the road to heaven is narrow and not very many, not very many people find it. It's not the same Jesus. It's not the same God. He came to divide. He came, man. And then now there's people that question, is homosexuality a sin? Come on, guys. Is lying a sin? Yes. Is cheating a sin? Yes. Is, is murder a sin? Yes. Is idolatry a sin? Yes. Is adultery a sin? Yes. So why are we saying that homosexuality isn't a sin? See, the word says it. And the word came to divide soul and spirit. He didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword, man. This is the sword right here. Is homosexuality a sin? It says it right here. We have to get our theology right. We have to know what's right and wrong. We have to ask God for wisdom. We don't need, we can't think with this. We got to think with the mind of Christ. We got to think with wisdom. Wisdom will tell us what's right and what's wrong. This is wisdom right here. This is wisdom. So, man, I'm just fired up today. I love Jesus and I'm going to shout it on the I'm going to shout it on the mountaintops. I don't care if you think that I'm crazy. I really don't care. I'm going to get a tattoo on my forehead right here. <laughs> I'm going to get a tattoo that says crazy for Jesus. Don't mess with me. Plus I got some crazy vato locos that will pull a five fold ministry on you. <laughs> crazy for Jesus, man. I don't care. I don't care if people think I'm crazy. I don't care if people look at me like, "Oh, he's doing way too much." We'll find out. We'll find out. We will find out one day. And I hope you don't find out the hard way. I hope you give your life to Jesus now. 
And you could have everlasting life and you live for him every day. You live according to your convictions. See, I live according to my convictions. I ask God every morning, give me more conviction. I want more conviction that when I do something that I'm not supposed to do, that I feel convicted about and that I change it. When I say something, something comes out of my mouth that is not supposed to come out of my mouth. Hello, somebody. That I feel convicted about it. It happened just last night. Something came out of my mouth, man, that I was not supposed to say. That that, that, that wasn't right and I had to say God forgive me of that God forgive me for I didn't I didn't mean to say that God forgive me and guess what he forgave me and then I said forget I asked God this morning to forgive me again he said I already forgave you don't ask for forgiveness again just don't do it again just don't do it again right he said I, he said I already forgave you I already forgot about that what are you talking about I forgot about it just go forward just don't do it again I said thank you Jesus Thank you, God. I don't have to be condemned. I don't have to walk in shame. I don't have to walk with my head down, but I can walk with my head high. I can, I can enter the, the holy of holies with boldness, man. I can come before my God with boldness. I don't have to go to a priest. I don't have to confess my sins to a priest. Because if I confess my sins to a priest, what do I need Jesus for? If I confess my sins to a priest, then I don't need Jesus. I need that priest. I heard someone say that they were, I heard a story of this lady that was with somebody, don't do that, Corbin, that was with somebody that was dying. And she said that God gave her the authority to ask for forgiveness for that person that was dying, that couldn't talk. That was, actually, no, the person was already dead. And, and she said that Jesus gave her authority to ask for his forgiveness. Wrong. That is wrong theology. It doesn't work like that, man. It does not work like that. Because if that was the case, then that, then that girl became his savior. That girl was his savior. He didn't need Jesus. He needed that girl to ask her for forgiveness because she did it for him. It doesn't work like that, man. Same thing with the priest. We don't need a priest. We could enter boldly. That's why the veil was torn. The veil was torn. When Jesus died upon that cross, the, the, cross, the, the victory was won. The victory was won. Sorry, I can't speak. The victory is won. It's already done. We win in the end. We, win, we won when Jesus died upon that cross. The veil was torn. The victory's won. It's done. It's a done deal. We win. The devil loses. Be on the winning side. Be on the right side. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go on a team and say, that team, that's the losing team. I want to be on that team. Oh, they're going to lose every single game. Uh, yeah, I want to be on that team. No, you want to be on the winning team. You want to be on the team that's going to win the game. You want to be on the team that's going to be victorious, man. That's the side that you want to be on. And that's the side that Jesus is on. He wins in the end every single time, no matter what. So we just walk in that victory. We walk. We are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We walk in that victory. So God bless you guys today. Walk in victory today. Man, don't be afraid. Don't. The Bible says, why are you afraid? You have such little faith. Don't be afraid. Have faith in Jesus. Have faith that he can. Have faith that he can see you through. Have faith that you can walk and he's with you. He's with you. He's actually carrying you that there's one foot set, set of footprints in the sand behind you. You look back on that mountain that you got through and you see that Jesus was carrying you, man. That's what he does when we are weak. He is strong. The Bible says to, to, um, the Bible says to die to your flesh, man. The Bible says that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. See, our flesh is weak, but thank God we have a spirit inside of us that is willing. A spirit that can carry us. A spirit that can help us get through these tough times. So I want to be an encouragement to you, man. God bless you today. Walk in the authority that Jesus has given you. Walk in that authority. God has given you authority over devils. God has given you authority over your circumstance. You don't have to be... Uh, you don't have to be a, what's that, a victim of your circumstance. You don't have to be a victim. Man, you walk in authority. You walk in, you walk knowing that the presence of God is inside of you. That heaven is living inside of you. And everywhere you go, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of an earthquake. You don't have to be afraid of a tsunami. You don't have to be afraid of a car accident. You don't have to be afraid of a hurricane, tornado. You don't have to be afraid of these things because if we die, we are in heaven. We never die. We don't die. When I die, I live. I never die. When I die, that's when I truly live. So I never die. I'm living now. 
My body's gonna die. I'm gonna put off this tent one day. I'm putting this thing off. I don't wanna, I'm just passing through this place. I'm passing through this place and I'm just being as I'm passing through. I'm being as I'm passing through. So God bless you guys today.